Welcome on board another lockdown escape flight. Today we are flying the American Airlines Boeing Dreamliner from Seattle to Anchorage. Your pilot today is Steve, so please fasten your seatbelt. Hello everyone, welcome along to another video. You find us today in Seattle and we're going to take this Dreamliner up to Anchorage. So hopefully we'll see some nice mountain views coming in for a, it'll be a late afternoon arrival so we should see a nice sunset so here we are in the cockpit we've got our um, pushback helper and we've got a new piece of kit which is PAX it's called passenger and crew experience um, and this is a payware program so basically you start it up start your flight put in your departure code the arrival code put in your flight number I use 210 I don't know why where I got that number from uh, your cruise altitude the flight time which today is going to be about three hours we'll give it a bit longer three hours and ten minutes and we'll give ourselves 25 minutes until takeoff. So you've got a drop down menu and you just choose the airline that you're flying, the number of passengers on board. And then you can choose all the extras. So whether the aircraft's got Wi Fi, whether you've got some boarding music, and of course, um, you can choose whatever music you want. You don't have to have boarding music. In-flight entertainment. Um, you can put your own custom safety brief. And that's it. Immediately it starts. And you can hear people boarding in the background. Which can be a bit loud. You can adjust the volume for that. And the music can get a bit repetitive after a while as well. But anyway, it's a new experience. Um, it's about, it's actually $29.99, which is about £21. Um, it does have a lot. I mean, it does have, you can, if you've got a microphone, you can have vocal interaction and make announcements um, on the plane. Uh, you can go into career mode and you can record your progress as you progress through knowledge, I guess, through using Flight Sim. It's quite a good little add-on. I think it just adds a bit more immersive um, experience. It's quite nice having, you know, thinking that there's, there's people boarding the plane and what have you. But, um, you know, if you want to pay that sort of money... And if you can access um, the actual safety videos or safety um, announcements from the actual airlines, you can, of course, use those as well. You just put them into a designated document folder and then you can use that. Uh, you can choose that particular announcement for the flight. So it's quite good. It works very well. It integrates very well with the aircraft and what it's doing on on a particular leg of the flight. So it's quite good in that respect. And if you click, you can actually see. There you go. That's the plan of the aircraft. And you can actually click on individual passengers to give you statistics about them. So Crystal Fox is looking a bit thirsty by the looks of things. You can see who's on board. That's the full passenger li list on the left. And you can scroll right down the whole list and you can see who's boarded and who hasn't. So we've got 300 people to get on board, so 
we might just um, yeah yeah we might not wait for them all to come on board we might do a bit of editing to this video otherwise it could be a long wait you can select immediate boarding or realistic um, realistic is going to obviously can take half an hour or something to board an aircraft this size and you can choose medium so it does the job in sort of 10 or 15 minutes I guess it's up to you how immersive you want um, packs to be and to work with your particular flight simulation entirely up to you but it's quite a nice lot and I quite like it I probably don't utilize it to its full extent but it's quite nice having that noise in the background to give you the um, experience of people actually boarding your aircraft so I quite like that anyway we're flying the Dreamliner again I find it to be quite this is the default Dreamliner with Microsoft there's no apart from the livery there's no other add-ons as you can see we're sort of wedged in to this corner gate which probably isn't very realistic I don't think I would have if I had known this gate was going to be so wedged in I might not have selected it however here we are so we'll just try and swing around and go straight out out of this tight spot So we'll need a good experience from our pushback. And here's a quick view of Seattle Airport. Now this is the default. I'm sure this is default. This isn't um, handcrafted. I'm sure this is the default airport with Microsoft. And there you can see some mountains in the distance. Yes, I could have chosen a much easier gate to get away, to get out of this airport. However, it's done now, so I shall make the best of it. I'll position the drone camera here and hopefully get a nice shot of, a nice runway shot, possibly take off, although probably not because the plane can't operate unless you're in the cockpit um, you have to if you're on the drone camera you can't actually operate the aircraft at least that's Gentlemen, that's been my experience your when you find your seat please be sure to place your larger carry-on items in the overhead bins and smaller items underneath the seat in front of you unless you're in a front row please place all of your items in the overhead bin if you have any trouble finding a location for your carry-on items there you go, that's the sort of announcement you get on board with PAX. Passengers to find their seats as well. If you are seated in an emergency exit row, please read the exit seating responsibilities in the safety card in the seat back in front of you. Please make sure you are willing and able to perform the actions required. If you are not able or prefer not to perform these actions, please let a flight attendant know so you can be reseated. You are free to use your portable electronic devices during the boarding process. We ask that larger electronic devices are stowed once we depart from the gate. Thank you and welcome aboard. We are ready to go when you are. There we go, we've got the nod, everybody's on board. Get rid of the jetway and let's get on our way. It'd be nice if we had more choices. Good afternoon, oh. ladies and gentlemen, and welcome aboard flight 210. Good service to Anchorage. 
Our flight time will be roughly three hours and ten minutes. Now that the cabin door is closed, please make sure that all devices are in airplane mode and your large devices are now shut down and stowed. Please fasten your seatbelt and make sure that all tray tables and seat backs are in the full upright and locked position for departure. Cabin crew, prepare cabin. Sorry, I don't like to interrupt. It'd be nice if we had more choice of voices, I think, with this program. You know, if it's pay where I'd expect a few more uh, voices rather than just the one um, American flight attendant. It would be nice to have more variety of voices and accents and stuff, but I guess that's something you can add yourself if you want to. I dare say you could probably record your own announcements in your own voice and then store them somewhere and then use those as the default um, announcements. I don't know. I haven't investigated it enough to find out. Anyway, it just makes the game a bit more 3D, really. You know, it gives it another dimension to have announcements and the ambient noise of passengers. Right, let's maneuver out of here without killing anybody or demolishing trees or fences. Yeah, he wants to put his foot down a bit. I'm using um, just scattered clouds for the journey today rather than the live weather. Just because I like, I think I like the view. I just like the thought that you can see land through clouds, that you're just not looking down on clouds for the entire journey. It's nice to see a bit of land, even though a lot of it, of course, is over the, will be over the sea. Oh, I think we're about to lose a lamppost here. And with the magic of flight sim, the wing just goes straight through it without causing any damage. Isn't it wonderful you can do that? And of course, when we get closer to Alaska, we should see some nice scenery, nice mountains, etc. We'll give it a final swing round and then that looks pretty good to me. Nicely lined up. I just hope the force from the engines don't cause some trouble on the roads behind. Right. Let's get the lights on. Uh, 
and get the engine started. Now you can see at the bottom of the screen that's um, that also comes as part of packs so it just gives you an indication of how the, f the, the stage of the flight and the, the passengers so at the moment it looks like a 95% passenger satisfaction so that's not bad. Expected departure is 3 minutes 20 and what else does it say we're at the pushback phase you can there's other things you can select from the menu at the bottom of the screen the cabin is ready for takeoff Well, she's getting a bit ahead of herself. We haven't even taxied to the runway yet. Give us a chance. Right, let's do this. Let's get to the runway. Parking brakes off. Accelerate slowly and uh, let's go. Remembering to take it nice and slowly around those corners to maneuver this beast of a plane. So it's quite a shortish taxiway today to the runway. A 
We've just set our flaps to 10 for takeoff. Just checking our drone camera is still in position. Gosh, it looks like I'm going really slowly. I can probably go a little bit faster. On the taxiway, on the straight taxiway and at least. I'm actually lined up at the wrong runway at 16 C. I need to get onto this one. So again, the def this is the default aircraft, the default um, Dreamliner, which comes with, with the premium deluxe version of Flight Sim. So the only thing I've added is the livery, which is in the livery mega pack. I don't want to put a link to it because I'm not sure if there's an, uh, another version of it. You're probably better just Googling it. And you'll find um, you'll find the link on the website where you can download a whole package of liveries for various aircraft from, from a multitude of airliners. You can see from the time at the bottom of the screen, the PAX screen, that I'm late now by four, nearly five minutes. So I think the boarding time was a lot longer in PAX than I was expecting, but there was over 300 passengers to get on board. So perhaps that's probably why. Right, we'll just stop here and get everything ready for takeoff.
Put on our runway lights, of course. Put the strobe lights on. Yeah, we can turn off the APU, finish with that. That's it, flaps to 10. We've got our clearance, so time to take off the parking brake and off we go. Now I'll try and switch to the drone camera if I can. Although I don't, I don't hold out much hope for being able to remain nice and central on the runway. Let's see how we get on. Right, let's get it as central as we possibly can. Now, that looks pretty good to me. That looks like it's nicely lined up. So let's go. Oh. <laughs> oh dear. You can't take your eyes off the cockpit for one second. No matter how centrally the plane is lined up. Oh well. We're safely in the air. Right, let's switch on autopilot and auto throttle. El Nav Vnav and start reducing those flaps as we build our speed. So we're back on schedule again, our expected arrival as you can see at the bottom of the screen is three hours, even though we were late taking off. So hopefully, let's see how we get on if we arrive on schedule. our little drone camera all on its own back on the runway 
And you can just see the flashing lights of the plane ahead in the distance. It's a very steep rate of Gentlemen, we have now passed 10,000 feet, so you may turn on larger portable electronic devices. This is also a reminder to please keep your seatbelt fastened throughout the duration of the flight and do not form a line near the laboratory. This aircraft is equipped with onboard Wi-Fi. If you wish to connect to the Wi-Fi, you'll be directed to a page to pay a small fee for internet access. We do offer complimentary in-flight TV thanks to our partners. Connect to the Wi-Fi and you'll be able to access our wide range of free live TV and paid movies libraries. off the fastened seatbelt sign. You can now get up and move around the cabin. However, we ask that you keep your seatbelt fastened when seated in case of unexpected turbulence. So we'll set our cruise altitude of 38,000 I've pushed the terrain, switch on the terrain indicator on the screen because whenever we're coming in for descending and landing there's going to be a lot of mountains um, around Anchorage so we want to make sure we're not going to have any incidents with some a high rise mountain we don't really want to do that
And there's our route over the, I suppose, the western seaboard of Canada. And then uh, crossing into Alaska and doing, a, as you can see, there's quite a bit of mountain area there when we're coming in. And then we do a bit of a loop in before we land in Anchorage. Well, all we do now is get up to our cruise altitude, slowly. And everything's configured now for the flight. So autopilot can just take over until it's time when we get to our top of descent and then we'll work out Bearing in mind the mountains, um, we'll have to work. We'll look at the flight plan and decide on a rate of descent. But sure, that's part of the fun of the game, isn't it? Avoiding mountains. Right, well, here we are. We've got a 99% satisfaction rate with the passengers, so that's pretty good. I think because they've just been given a drink or a snack or something before we started our descent. So that's probably why they're happy. So as you can see, we've started our descent into... Anchorage and the sun is a little bit lower in the sky I think by the time we land the sun should be quite low in the sky it should be a nice nice light for landing As you can see, as we're getting lower, those mountains are getting closer and closer. That's why we've got the terrain map off, so we see anything that's 
in our flight path that is red as in the mountains if we see any red then that's when we need to be a bit worried because we may not make it over the top of them basically but so far it looks okay and I'm following the altitude as indicated on the display because I'm going to assume that they are safe altitudes but I have to say some of those mountains look scarily high as you can see once we're over that bit once we're over the this little section ahead then it looks like the mountains are behind us and we can go down to a safe altitude for landing we just have to get over this high ground ahead Still not sure about the realism of the mountains. I might have to tweak around with some of the settings, the graphic settings. They just, I don't know. I'm not blown away by the, how real they look. Or maybe I'm just being fussy, I don't know. Well, the passengers are certainly, certainly going to get a, a nice view on this flight. Doesn't look as if it's going to make it over this peak. I'm sure it will. It's quite deceptive. Oh yeah, easy. something about the look of those mountains they just look too rounded to me it just doesn't look like a mountain it doesn't look like rock it's just a bit mm, a bit meh because I've seen some spectacular photographs and videos released um, I think from Microsoft and the mountains look amazing. I mean, they really do like look like the real thing and I have to say these just don't look very real to me, you know So I'd, I'm sure it's something to do with my settings. I need to look at my graphic settings and see if I can improve those a little bit Yeah, we've still a lot of mountains to cross here before we... Before we uh, 
can reduce our altitude a little bit. I'll tell you, the one great thing about doing flight sim, it certainly takes your mind off other things, other other uh, real-life things that are going on in the world at the minute. As, uh, I don't know what it's like where you are, but we're still very much in lockdown in the UK. Today was a good day for me, actually, because... It was my shopping day, so I got to go out this morning and see people. So that I always look forward to a Thursday. However, yeah, this is certainly a nice bit of... For me, it's therapy, I have to admit. To me, it just keeps my mind focused for a few hours every day. Do a flight, do a bit of video editing, a bit of rendering. It is providing real structure to my day at the minute. Right, I just have these peaks to get over. And we're still at about seven and a half thousand feet. Expected arrival in about fifty what's that say, fourteen and a half minutes. Mm. I think that might be a tad optimistic. Oh, nice screenshot there with the mountains behind. And of course that uh, time, that sorry, the altitude that is being announced there is, I'm guessing the distance between me, between the aircraft and the mountain beneath. So we've got plenty of clearance. So we can set our next descent rate. So we just have to clear these peaks ahead and then we are the ground drops away.
which will give us plenty of time to get down to our landing altitude and speed. Right, this is the last bit of mountain ahead, this ridge. Once we're over that, then we can start to bring our altitude down. You can see the, the effect of the air coming off the mountains on the aircraft. Right, so we just have this loop to do and come in for hopefully a nice ILS landing into Anchorage. We've got plenty of time so we can have a nice easy descent down to our glide slope altitude of 2000. I can see a lot of lights flashing there, but I think there's a few airfields in this area, so it could be any one of two or three.
we've still got 99% customer satisfaction so that's that's pretty good Right, we're on the big slow turn now to line up with the runway. Unfortunately, we're overrunning at the minute to the tune of nearly three minutes. So we're a bit late. This is quite a long, a long old um, approach to Anchorage. Anyway, this is the final turn coming up, and the sun is starting to set, really, isn't it? Now, this camera, I'm not sure where this is, actually. I thought this was at the runway, but I, I can't see the plane anywhere. Looks like there's a plane landing ahead of us. And I've got live traffic switched on, so any traffic that appears on the VFR map is, is real. That's actually flying. It's in the air at the moment, in real life. should be able to switch on the localizer shortly. When I see that the glide slope has been activated So we'll get the speed down, get more flaps out, and start to prepare for landing. Yeah, 
There we go, we've got our diamond active for the glide slope, so we can activate our localizer. Runway in sight. We'll get our gear down. Ready for landing. speed down. I still can't see our aircraft. Mind you, I'm looking into the setting sun, I guess. Be very hard to see the lights. Am I even at the right airport? Because there is a couple of airports in this area. Cannot see any aircraft. I think it's because it's the setting sun. Or it could be I'm at the wrong airport, perhaps. Anyway, oh dear, our satisfaction rate is dropping because we're late now. We're we're ten minutes late on arrival. That's not good. This has been a very long approach, I have to say.
I'm at the wrong runway. No wonder. I can see the plane. I can see the lights now. There's the tower of the airport we should be at. I was at the wrong runway. There we go, that's where we should be. And there's our plane coming in. I don't know whether I'll have a chance to quickly switch to this view. We'll see. Oh, I need to turn on the approach. Now we're going a bit off centre here, off the centre line. One thousand. Oh. oh yeah, we're well off centre. I think I'm going to have to switch off autopilot and shift us. No, I'm not sure why that has happened. It does happen every now and again, I've noticed. But sometimes the... And the approach is just not... Oh gosh, what am I doing? There we go. Yeah, that was okay. I think there was a little, little bounce perhaps on the runway. But considering we had to make those adjustments at the end, I think that's okay. Welcome to Anchorage. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Anchorage. The local time is 5.32 p.m. and it's currently about 59 degrees Fahrenheit. You can now use your mobile devices. Please remain seated until the aircraft has come to a complete stop and the seatbelt sign is turned off. Remember to use caution when opening the overhead bins as items may have shifted during the flight. If this is your final destination, we thank you for flying with us. If you're making a connection, we encourage you to check your itinerary to ensure a smooth continuation of your journey. We apologize for the delay. Please coordinate with airline staff as necessary regarding connecting flights or vouchers. Yeah, well, we're only 15 minutes late. 14 minutes, that's not too bad. What's the satisfaction rate? 83%. Ungrateful is the word springs to mind. Right, let's see where this blue ribbon is taking us. This is default airport again. 
Not many aircraft here by the looks of things. It looks very empty. And of course there's a vehicle in the way, as you would expect. Oh, we've got a geezer bringing us in. Gosh, you can't see him. I'm going to run him over. I can't go any further. <laughs> he must be blinded by those lights. Because, of course, you're supposed to turn the runway lights off before you get to the gate. The advantages of having a co-pilot that he can do all that. Looks like we've got external power. Right, let's get these lights off. Oh, poor guy, he's not going to see for 48 hours. That's it. And there's the deboarding music as the passengers leave the aircraft. And here we are, the sun is just starting to set now. So the sky is beautiful. as we end another flight. Forgot to reduce, uh, do the flaps again. Anyway, with this gorgeous sunset, that's the end of another video. So, thanks for watching.